Hi, for this tutorial, I'm gonna focus on just one component of a shelter or sleep system, the tensioned ridge line. Lines like this are almost always used as a way of hanging a tarp like this, but they're also pretty useful if you need a washing line or a way of organizing your kit or just a way of hanging some reasonably heavy items off the ground while you sort them out. We're gonna look primarily at the way I set my ridge lines up but I want to discuss the components in that so that you can replicate it with whatever cord or system is right for you. The first thing you'll need is a gap. You'll need a gap between two solid reliable anchors. These are most likely going to be a pair of trees, but it could be a boulder or an anchor in a wall or a building or the roof rack of a vehicle. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that those anchors are solid and reliable and they aren't going to move, especially when you put some force in between them and you aren't gonna pull one of those anchors over just by tensioning the ridgeline. Next, you want to have a look behind those anchors to make sure that there aren't any nasty surprises waiting for you. In the UK, it's not really going to be venomous creatures and we're not going to worry about snakes and scorpions and spiders and things that are going to ruin your day that way. But it could be some uh, sharp items, metal embedded in trees, uh, deadfall hanging up above your head or trees that are hanging like widow makers in the area around that those anchor points. And that if the wind picks up, will make a mess of you if they come down on you in the night. And of course, you want to make sure that those two anchors are roughly the right distance apart. They have to be far enough apart so that you can set your tarp up in between them without, them touch, without it touching the trees, but also that you have enough cord in your system to effectively tension that ridge line between the trees. I try to look for sites where the distance between the two anchor points is about two thirds of the length of my ridgeline cord. So by that I mean my ridgeline cord is about 30% longer than the gap between those two anchors. For the ridgeline material itself I use this. This isn't paracord, this is climbing accessory cord. So this is a little bit stiffer, it's a little bit more hard wearing and it really is designed to be tied into a knot, tensioned and then be easy enough to untie again and again and again. This particular cord here is probably getting on for 10 years old. And for this three meter by three meter tarp, I've got a cord of about five meters. I normally leave the cord attached to the tarp in the bag so that when I get it out of my pack and I want to set it up, everything goes up in one go and it's really quick to do. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna ditch the tarp and just look at the ridge line. So I've got a gap. I've got two reliable anchors. I've checked them for safety, they're the right distance apart, and I need to start tying knots. So what happens normally in YouTube tutorials and things like that is someone starts going on about the event hitch and they start twisting their hand twice and pulling a loop through and doing all sorts of weird things with a knot. It doesn't matter exactly which knot you use. And in fact, some knots are better for certain types of cord. Some knots are slightly better in when that cord is wet and so on. You can experiment with the cord that you're going to use. What matters is what that knot does. So the first knot I tie is a releasable knot. This is it's kind of a version of a bowline that's finished in a way to make it releasable. But it doesn't matter exactly which named knot you use. I could have used one of half a dozen different knots here to start off this ridge line. What matters is that it is releasable and it's releasable under tension. So for this particular knot, if I pull on this little tail here, this loop will start to close down and eventually pull through and the whole thing will come undone. This means that when I'm finished with the ridge line and I wanna take it down, even if it's become wet and even frozen, I can put some force on that, pull it, and the whole thing will come undone very easily and I won't have to cut through it or leave any behind. So at the other end, you have this, which is the knot I use to tension everything out. And it's simple because, well, I'm a simple man. And by simple man, I mean idiot. 
I forget things, I lose things, I leave things behind. So I try and make systems be as simple as possible, to use as few components as possible. So this is all tied with just the ridge line. There are no carabiners or fancy gadgets used to tension it out. What you have is the ridge line coming from the releasable knot at that end, going through here, around the back of the tree, back over itself, around the back of the tree again, over itself again, and then with two or three passes around the tree, you've started to take a little bit of that slack out every single time. And every pass tensions that line out a little bit, about an inch or so at a time. The last knot is really simple. It's just a pass around the main ridge line three or four times and then tied off with an overhand here. That knot isn't taking the tension of the ridge line. That's all being taken up by the friction of the line against the bark of the tree. What this does is stops this last pass from pulling back around the tree. So it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be anything particular. It just has to tie it off so that it doesn't slip away. I could just throw a knot on here and not have to bother with any of this tensioning. But what I'm going to end up with is a flappy tarp. The tighter I can make this, then the tighter my tarp and whole ridgeline system is going to be. And that's pretty good. That's about as much as I'd want. And this is what you should end up with. A ridgeline tensioned out between two good solid anchors with a releasable knot at that end and a knot at that end that allows you to incrementally add tension to the system and then secure it and keep it there for a while. Any cord or rope or string of any type has some inherent stretch to it. So as you tension it out, it will stretch out. If it's brand new or if it hasn't been used very often, then it will stretch more. You might have to set it to a certain length by stretching it out the first time you use it. So expect this to sag slightly over time. This might also be because the trees are moving slightly in the wind or the conditions have changed. It might have rained overnight or it may have dried out and affected the length of that particular material and the cord that you've used. Lots of factors can affect the length and how it changes. So it is a slight variable, but you've got a tensioning system at that end. So all you have to do is loosen that, retension it a little bit in the morning and you're good to go again. And if it's not already on the ridge line, then now you can hang your tarp using prussics or clips or bungees or whatever else it is that you're going to use. And some of you are thinking, well, what about the damage to the trees? Am I damaging it with a cord? Well, this is a legitimate concern. We know that cord tied around a tree for a significant amount of time will start to damage that trunk and affect its growth. I mean, just over there, we have some trees that had some baler twine tied around them, I don't know, about 30 years ago. And not only have the trees developed and grown around it, but they've completely encased that baler twine. If you tie a cord tightly to a tree trunk, then you could start to put pressure on the cambium layer. This is a layer of living tissue just under the bark here that is basically the living part of the trunk of the tree. This is a particular problem for things like hammocks where you could be putting quite a load particularly if you're my size, uh, to the anchors at either end of that system and the cord will be really cutting into the tree. Not all trees are going to be as affected as quickly as others and it really does depend on which species you've chosen for your anchor. And some people like to use straps like this one to spread the load of the anchor, tree savers, cambium savers, whatever you're going to call them. Uh, there are lots of DIY options and you can buy some. They work to a greater or lesser degree. It depends how much of a load you're putting on the tree. I think what makes a greater difference is not tying to a tree for any significant length of time. If I'm going to somewhere where I'm going to be using a tarp for more than two or three nights in one go, then I will look for two or three other different locations in the immediate area that I can move to. So I can spend two or three nights here, then two or three nights over there, and two or three nights over there. That reduces the amount of time that you're tensioning those two trees and with that ridge line for. And by moving around uh, after one or two nights, you are allowing that cambium layer some time to decompress and to recover slightly. And 
based on experimentations, at least in this woodland for the last eight years, that seems to work. And I've not noticed any real damage to the trees from myself and lots of other clients hanging hammocks and tarps from these trees. So that's it. Thank you for watching. This wasn't intended as a way of saying, this is how you definitely should set up your tarp. It's just a way I know that works for me. It's a system that works for me. And I can drop different knots into either end of that. And as long as it still does the same job, then it will still work. And it will work in different conditions for different circumstances, for different size tarps and all sorts of things. If you have anything that you want to add to this or suggestions that you think people might find useful who are looking at this tutorial, put them in the comments below. In the description for the video, you'll find links to some of the other knots we use and some other things to think about. Also, just where this tarp's from and what I use and the materials I use. If you think this video will be useful to somebody else, then please share it with them. Share it through social media or through Reddit or whatever channels that you use. And if you have some feedback for us, then put them in the comments below. If you like the video, then like it and subscribe to the channel and do the notifications bell so you get told when we upload new videos. Original Outdoors, we're not a YouTube channel, we're a business based up here in North Wales, over on the western edge of the UK. We run training courses. We run training courses for all sorts of people. Have a look at originaloutdoors.co.uk. You'll see all the public courses there and all the private training that we offer and more articles and blogs and how to's and tutorials and hopefully some other useful things but if you're just going to go on and watch the next video then thank you anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you again next time